As someone who enjoys RPGs quite a bit, it would make sense that at some point I would want to make one. Uh, I've done this in terms of tabletop games, and I've also made a ton of mods for games like Skyrim or Fallout 4, but I've always wanted to make my own RPG video game from scratch. A major barrier to this is the fact that games that have mod tools usually have the assumptions of the game built into the tools. Things like AI capabilities, player goals, how quests work, and the structure of the game systems all dictate the way that those tools usually work. So in that regard, if you want to make an RPG in less than a thousand years or something close to that, then you need to make all of those tools, but specifically for your game. That leads me to this demo project that you can see here. This editor is meant to let you make complex branching dialogue with conditional options and call game code through dialogue events. The way these sorts of tools work for modding RPGs or indeed making RPGs often has a structure to them with some sort of scripting language to do conditional checks or to call events that track uh, quest progress or track giving rewards. This is usually very limiting and requires someone to expose very niche elements of the game so that you can make whatever content you want. But this really can only work if your whole game is already built when you start making content, or your past content work could become obsolete. This can have a lot of workflow and time-wasting flaws when you're on a team of less than 10 people. When I first started working on this tool, I had a few set goals that I wanted to achieve with it that doesn't really fit in any other existing tool that's out there now for this sort of functionality. I wanted to make something that was easy to use. I wanted to make something that, do that doesn't have the limitations of those other dialogue tools, which basically meant that I needed some form of scripting. And I wanted a system that could make use of all of these functions, variables, and systems that are in the game, rather than just being able to access specific exposed elements that that you decide to let the dialogue have access to. And at the moment, the current system has achieved every one of those with this current iteration, even though it's relatively basic right now. The way this works is that there are four different kinds of nodes. There are chat nodes for dialogue options and NPC speech, branch nodes that will let you have two different options for how the conversation splits, variable nodes that let you define variables exclusive to the conversation, and event nodes that let you call code whenever the conversation progresses to it. With those four nodes, you can basically do any kind of conversation that you've ever seen in a game. In fact, even having a traditional editor or scripting setup, like mentioned before, would work to achieve the same results. But one of my goals was to have complete access to the game's code and not have a separate scripting layer that needs to be supported. So the way that I accomplished this is with these red areas you can see on the chat nodes that are conditional statements. Each one of these are a conditional statement that gets checked before this option can show up for the player to select it. And for branch nodes, you basically do the same thing, where you're basically just making a conditional element that will branch to a pass or fail set of options. And the event node is where you can really write any kind of code that you want to run, and it can be anything that either the editor, uh, your game engine, or your game itself has access to in code. You can have that run in one of these. So this can be anything from function calls, to loops, to setting variables, to grabbing references to objects really just anything that your whole coding setup can do. So as mentioned, all of this is technically possible with a traditional scripting system or a traditional editor, but the primary benefit to this system is that it's compiled right in c -sharp along with everything else in your project. This means that all the profiling, the error messages, the compile checks are all given for free and you don't need to work with any other kind of language or any other kind of compiling system in order to get that functionality. Uh, you don't need to test everything. There's a lot of stuff that will just get caught when it gets to compile time rather than you actually having to play through everything and noticing uh, manually when things aren't getting triggered the way that you want them to. So there's no need to have special code that bridges a scripting language in the game code, and there's no need to learn the syntax of an entirely new language for this kind of system either. If you can work in C-sharp for your project, then you can work in C-sharp for making content for your project using this. So if you look at all the elements for this uh, dialog tree here that I have, what it basically does is it grabs all of these elements and makes a custom C-sharp class for each character that you want to talk to. So this dialog is specifically associated with a specific character, as you would expect. So that character is also going to get this special compiled C-sharp script that, that collects all of this functionality and makes it available to them when you're running something like their dialog. And if I look at the way that this code actually manifests inside of the editor, it will automatically set things up so it'll add all your variables in, it'll give you a default speaker and listener dialogue character for you to have assigned, and then for each one of the possible options in each speech chat, there's going to be a conditional statement that checks whether or not it's allowed to be selected by the player. And then also you can see further down, I have the events that all, all the events that are getting defined are getting added right here in 
C sharp, and then same for the branching nodes. These function basically the same as the conditionals for the options, where it just checks whether or not this uh, resolves to true or false, and then it will the system will just know to branch a certain way based on that. And the great part about this is that any of the errors that you have when you're typing in your conditionals here or any of your events here, the moment that you compile this out to a C-sharp script, all of those are going to get caught immediately. You don't need to do any special work to find those errors. You don't need to do any testing. It's just going to tell you this function doesn't exist or these variables aren't uh, written correctly, this function isn't written correctly. Those sort of things are all going to happen in the same flow that you have all, your, all the rest of your code working in your game. So as a demo, I have this other character dialogue tree right here. This is meant to be for a guard in the game. So this has a bunch of different functions and variables that I've already laid out to work with them. And so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to add another little layer of dialogue right before you go to the end of the conversation. And this is something that's only going to happen when there is a specific branch that happens. Uh, so I have this variable that I've been tracking time spoken to. So this branch is going to check whether or not you've been speaking to this person multiple times. Uh, so we're just going to check if the if the time spoken is greater than four. Or actually, let's just make it five. So it'll be something really rare that can come up for the player. So this will just be a normal conversation where it seems like you're actually almost pestering this person for information about uh, their job. So like that's what this this initial branch here is like asking what this person what their job is or what their function is in the town that you're in and you can kind of go through multiple branches already and this is going to be another offshoot of that to where if you made a good where if you made a good first impression then you're going to have this special little option that you can come up to. So you've spoken to him five times so you're going to want a new chat option when that situation comes up and so if this is true then you're going to want to move on to this dialogue and if it's false, we're just going to move on to the normal like progression of the conversation where uh, he just kind of ends the conversation and doesn't want to talk to you anymore. Okay, and so since this is just an example, he's just going to say, why do you keep asking me this? And then you're going to get a uh, an option here that just says, like, I'm just joking. And then another one that says that you actually want to become a guard. And this is just going to be a false choice, so like these are both going to go right back into carry on then. He's just going to end the conversation in an incredibly awkward and straightforward manner. And so we're going to add a couple more conditionals here uh, where it's if you made a good impression. So we already know that you made a good impression up to this point to get to here. Uh, so we're actually just going to check to see if your relationship is above a certain value at this point. Uh, and that's when you can actually ask him about being a guard and... Ideally, this would branch into something where he has a little bit more dialogue, but just for demonstration purposes, we're just going to grab the speaker, which is the NPC, and we're going to say check relationship. And we're going to check the relationship with the listener, which is the player. And we're going to check to see if it's greater than, let's say, 50. And so now this line of dialogue is going to go through here. It's going to say, did you make a good first impression early on? If you did, then you're going to be able to check if you've spoken to him five times before. So he has some kind of uh, rapport with you. And then that's going to branch to see if you have spoken to him more than five times and you can ask this. Otherwise, he's just going to end the conversation immediately like he normally would. But once you have actually talked to him five different times, then he's going to, if he likes you a certain amount, so if you've talked to him before if you've done like a quest for him or if he just sees you around a lot then maybe he'll actually entertain the idea of you mentioning that you want to become a guard uh, otherwise you're just going to kind of pass off if you don't actually have a good relationship with him then you're going to not feel confident enough to ask something like that so it'll just branch off and end the conversation like normal and the final demo is i have some basic ui set up here uh, this is a much more simple conversation path that i made just for this demo purpose. This is essentially just going to be the player having a conversation with themselves. Uh, so I'm going to show off how that kind of works. So if I unequip my bow here, I can open up my speaking dialogue and it'll just have the hello option here. Uh, you can select that and then I can choose any one of these different options with the mouse wheel. Uh, and I can choose, so I had only one option which was hello at first and then I can move on to this one and I can say hey. Uh, they will just say goodbye. 
I can open up dialogue again, and now that I have spoken to this person before, I have all these new options, so I can ask them about recent events, or ask them about someone that they know, or ask them about rumors that they've heard about, uh, and these would each be like separate uh, chunks of information that are specific to this character. If you uh, select any of these, it'll just reset you back to the same dialogue option, because there's no functionality there. But you can now progress onwards and you have this new option here, which uh, you say what now, and you can say up to you, or he's saying up to you and you say not sure or goodbye. And then either way, he's just going to say goodbye to you. So this shows that you can have multiple different branching over time. You can check any kind of variable you want. It's all up to your imagination, basically, how you want to integrate this with your specific game. And it's all done through this really powerful and uh, simple node editor here that basically gives you all the functionality of scripting in the engine normally in Unity, but you can use that to specifically make content and not have to have any kind of slow process of preparing and passing information back and forth or working with a programmer just to get some basic interaction working with uh, the systems of your game. So what's next for this? As it is now, it's powerful enough to make all of the character interactions I could ask for in a game. Uh, it basically gives me the complete control over my entire game from a systems level from the dialogue, which is really great. And that's definitely the step one for having a tool like this really be useful for multiple different projects or multiple different developers. Uh, the next step is to make a more user-friendly version, streamlining some of the editing so that anyone can use it, possibly adding a customizable UI system for demonstrations. And I want to add support for speech audio files in the node graph, the same way that uh, a lot of other RPG systems or, or any kind of character dialogue stuff would probably need some recorded dialogue for their characters. So honestly, this was something I didn't think would work this well, since it seems so conventional to just use a scripting language and kind of integrate that into your engine and have all of those things be manually supported. The fact that I managed to get this system so tightly integrated with the normal development flow of Unity uh, it's, it's still amazing to me, honestly, and I think that teams or designers that aren't afraid of scripting or learning scripting will be able to make content so much more efficiently and at a higher quality without all of the limitations that other dialogue systems have. You don't really need to custom fit your game systems to match the tool that you're using. You can actually just use whatever systems you want, and they will integrate seamlessly in this as long as you are using a C-sharp backend the way that most developers with Unity are using. And then once all of those improvements are in, I feel like this is something that can actually be publicly available and usable for anybody that's trying to make dialogue for their game. Anybody trying to make an RPG or a visual novel or just trying to integrate something like a Twine game into like a 3D game engine, uh, anything like that will be possible using this tool. So with all of this gone through, uh, if you want to track the progress of this, I'll be making videos on any major improvements I make. Uh, so subscribe if you want to get notified. And if you want to support development of this tool or any other tool or games or videos that I make, I do have a Patreon that gets you access to all of these things for cheaper than they would be on any other store. So I also appreciate the support. So with that said, thank you and goodbye.